Hey guys, Kevin the Mac Expert here with a video overview slash demo of the new 3.0 software for the iPhone and the iPod Touch. So today, Apple <coughs> released the 3.0 software to the public. This 3.0 software was actually available to developers as a beta in several different builds for a while, but now it has been released to the public, and I'd like to give you a walkthrough overview of this new software. So here we go. So, there were several different <clears throat> new aspects of this software and several different new things that have been updated. So I'd like to walk you through them. Here we go. So first I'll start with cut, copy, and paste. So I'll go into notes. And in, in notes, I can, to cut, copy, and paste, to select something, I just press down on what I want and then I hit select. And then you see these two blue dots with a line, and I can drag that, I'll drag that over here. Then I can hit copy. So I'll go over here, add a new note, and then I can hit paste. And there it is. And if that's a mistake, if I don't want it there, I can just give it a shake, and it says undo paste or cancel. So undo paste, and there it is. So that's cut, copy, and paste. And this actually works in other applications too. So I'll do the same thing and I'll select it. Select, copy, and I can go into another application and do it. But you know, same thing. <clears throat> so now I'd like to show you the lands landscape keyboard mode. So this also works in several different applications, but I'll show it to you in notes for the sake of confidentiality and other things like that in mail. So here we go, and you see we have a landscape keyboard in here. And there's also a landscape keyboard in no in mail, and that makes it much, much easier, for me at least, typing out emails, and it's also a big deal for me uh, in, in notes. So that's really great to be able to type in landscape keyboard mode. I really like that, so I'm really glad they included that. Okay, so home. Next feature up, we have Spotlight. I can do a Spotlight search of my entire iPod right from here. So I just go like this, and I can search for something. So I'm going to search for, I want to open up this Audi A4 app that I have. So I'm going to type in A-U-D-I, Audi. And that's the game, and it shows me a couple other results uh, that are in different types too. Like this is an app, this is music, and this is a mail site or a mail um, <clears throat> page. So I'll just click on what I want and the game opens up right here. So that was pretty easy. I just type in what I want. And that's sort of, I'd say, maybe the first step towards easily managing your apps. Because one of the things that now people are getting so many apps in their iPhone that it's pretty difficult to manage. So having the ability to search is definitely <clears throat> a pretty big step forward. Next, I'd like to show you YouTube and some of the improvements that they made to this app on the iPhone or the iPod Touch in the 3.0. So I'll click on YouTube, tap YouTube, and we have all the usual, nothing much there. But the real improvements have been made in more. And I can sign in with my YouTube name and password, and I can view all of my subscriptions and other things like that. And I have all of my subscriptions right here, which I can view new videos or just videos from my subscriptions. So I'll hit new videos. Uh, for my subscriptions. And so I'll tap on one. And the movie lo and the uh, YouTube video loads up. Like that. So I'll hit done. And then what I can do is I can rate, comment, or flag this video right from the application. So I'll hit rate or comment and I can tap a start a rate and right from here. So just like that. Cancel. And I'll go back. And I can also read the comments that are here. That are down there. So new improvements there. There are more improvements made to the iTunes <coughs> app which actually now allowed you to download movies and podcasts right on the go on your iPhone or your iPod Touch. 
Now, uh, you can download any files that are under 10 megabytes. 10 megabytes or under on an iPhone over the 3G. However, if it's over 10 megabytes, you need a Wi-Fi connection to do this. So a little bit of a drawback, but it is something new and improved that's very good. So I'll go ahead and open up the iTunes app. And once it loads up, you'll see that down at the bottom, I have music, videos, podcasts, and more. Uh, search and more. So, under videos, I can go to TV shows, <coughs> movies, and even music videos. So right now, I'll just scroll down here to, say, a TV episode, or a show, like Top Gear. And then what I can do is I can preview it right on here, or I can buy it right from here. And it doesn't. It seems that my Wi-Fi connection isn't great, so hopefully this isn't too bad on load up time. Anyway, so here we go. Down here, I have all these. There are all these shows, and I can tap to preview, or I can, you know, double tap for more info and just hit this to buy the episode. So there we go. That's the new <clears throat> and improved iTunes app. And also, I'd like to show you a small improvement that they made in the App Store. So just a small improvement thing that they made was to add the ability to redeem. Uh, so the App Store app has stayed mostly the same. However, they added the ability to redeem, uh, but I can't go in there because it has a uh, personal information. But you can redeem iTunes gift cards and such right on here. So that's another pretty good thing. And, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, that's, well, here, I can go into stocks. Another slight difference here is that in stocks, I can rotate it like this, and I can view stock data and flip through. Let's see, retrieving chart. There we go. And I can view it one day, one week, one month, all the way up to two years. Two years. And that's great. Uh, previously, you know, to get this uh, landscape mode, you would have to buy another app. Uh, actually, Bloomberg is a pretty good app for that. But now, it comes with stocks. And that's it. <clears throat> so this is OS 3.0. And some more information uh, I'll include next. And the 3.0 software update is free for iPhone users, whether it be the first generation iPhone or the 3G iPhone, and it costs $9.95 for iPod Touch users, regardless of which iPod Touch generation it is. So, there are a few other features that I'd like to talk about, including ones in the iPhone, such as voice memos, uh, which are on the iPhone, which allow you to, you know, talk into, to record a little message and save that, and then you can choose to send it to email, or send it via MMS. And that leads me to MMS. MMS is um, <clears throat> where you can <clears throat> send video, photos, audio, or contact info to other people on the iPhone in messages. So that's a long-awaited feature that has been available on most phones, but not available in the iPhone until now. And AT&T will not support that until late summer. That's a big shock. And a few other things is that the iPhone 3.0 OS includes stereo Bluetooth, which you can use that for compatible headphones. It includes more parental control options, new languages supported, and the ability to sync up your notes, notes application, to your Mac or PC. And another thing which is pretty cool, which I just noticed today, while syncing my iPod, it said that I uh, have the ability to encrypt my iPod Touch backups with a password, um, which is pretty good, so that way no one can access my files, or if I wanted to, I have no reason to, but for some people who have very confidential data on there, that's one of the other reasons too. And also about confidential data, um, if you lose your iPhone and you have Mobile Me service, you can uh, go on Mobile Me and type in a message, and that message will show up on your iPhone, and your iPhone will ring, even if it's in silent mode. So that way you can say, you know, please call me, reward if found, blah, 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 something like that. 
And also, if you cannot find it and you have important data, you can do a remote wipe of the device. So that's very cool. And in addition to the ability to have peer-to-peer -peer apps, peer-to-peer -peer games to connect with another iPhone that's nearby so you could play with another person on different devices. So that's pretty cool. And also, internet tethering will be available, hopefully. It's not available on the iPhone in the U.S. yet, but hopefully soon that will be available soon. So, uh, lots of new things, lots of new features in the iPhone OS 3.0 software update. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kevin, the Mac expert, youtube.com slash the Mac expert. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.